welcome to the next part in the traffic generation strategies for outsourcing your niche. I hope everybody's doing really well today and it's really exciting to see you all online today and to be participating in today's webinar. All right, my name is Tyrone Shum and today I'm going to be sharing the second part of this traffic generation strategy on this whole eight part webinar series on outsourcing your niche website. Before I do jump into it today, I want to just get a quick sound check to ensure that people firstly can see my screen and also can hear me. So if you wouldn't mind just uh, putting a yes or no onto your questions box, which is located on the right hand of your screen inside your GoToWebinar control panel, you'll be able to see that. And if you wouldn't mind just letting me know that you can see that at this point in time, so that way I can proceed before I get started. Because the last thing I want to do is just uh, start and then find out that you can't even see my screen or hear my volume. All right, so we're still waiting for a few other latecomers coming into the call. If, uh, if you're still coming in, welcome and thanks very much for coming on today. All right, it looks like uh, people are okay with it. So I'm going to get the ball rolling right now and jump straight into it today. All right, before I do jump into it, uh, if you've been following this series, we're up to week six right now. So the last five weeks I've been going through and sharing with you on exactly what to do in terms of setting up your niche site, how to find your niche market and all those details as well. Now, I just want to do a quick recap on what we did last week so that way you, you can be sure exactly what we've done. And as I mentioned, this is a week by week. This is, yeah, this is basically a week by week course that you can take. And the thing is, is that you just got to take little baby steps every t week. And that's what I'm just trying to encourage you to do. So that way you can also at the same time uh, be able to just follow these things through and get it done because if I gave you everything all at one go, most likely you probably don't, wouldn't know where to get started. So this is why each week has been broken down. All right, let's just jump back and have a look at what we did last week. The part one of what we did last week was to actually uh, understand the whole backlinking strategy. And this is a backlinking strategy that is already available out on the internet. You know, I wasn't that smart to be able to create it. Uh, we basically had learned it off from a person called Joseph Archibald. And also Pat Flynn has gone into that strategy quite a lot in detail on his blog. So you can check that out. But basically for these webinars, the whole idea is for you to be able to follow these step by step and implement it. All right, so the next thing I wanna share with you with in part one was I went through and talked about setting up and uh, getting your accounts up and running, setting accounts for your article directories. That was what I talked about. And if you had been watching the review of the webinar and also were participating in that on that day, then what I would, would have recommended you to do is to take action and set up 15 different accounts, okay? So that way, once you've got that in place, you're pretty much ready to go for this week's part because this week I'm going to jump into quite a lot of detail. So in this week, I'm just going to give you a quick overview which is part two of the traffic generation strategy. And in part two, I'm going to be talking about specifically how to be able to produce more content quickly, which with more content means that means that you'll be able to build up more backlinks as I as I discussed right here. So this is exactly where we're trying to build more backlinks over to your niche website. And obviously the more content that you produce, the more backlinks we can actually link back to your site and also through other means. So I'll be talking about that. Uh, and then through that, I'll be showing you how to use a method called spinning which will be able to allow you to produce more content very, very quickly. And then after that, I'll share with you on talking about submissions of these types of articles to be able to generate backlinks back to your uh, site. And there'll be article directories, which I'll also be talking about again. And that's the reason why I've actually separated it into a few parts because uh, the whole idea is for you to be able to just take bits and pieces of these and in implement them week by week because if you had to go and submit 
set up, submit, and also work on your article directories, I can guarantee you would have been overwhelmed. So this week, it's if you've got all your articles directories set up with your accounts, this week's going to be submissions. Then the next one is talking about Web 2.0 and submissions to those, so such as Blogger, Squidoo, WordPress, and so forth. And by the end of the session, I'll be giving you some action steps talking about what to spin and how to submit it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be overviewing for today. I get ready because there's quite a lot of things to do and there's going to be a, a lot of things that I want to encourage you to look into doing because it's actually quite a lot in depth. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is let's look at creating more content and why. Why more content? Now, the reason why you want to create more content is eventually this content will get spawned onto the internet or sent out to the internet. And say, for example, we're looking at your niche site over here. I'll just give you a quick review of what we did last week. And as I said, you want to be able to get as many backlinks as possible back to your niche website. Not immediately, I mean, over a period of time, but for that to all grow. And there was sites like article directories. There was also sites such as Web 2.0, which is like Blogger, Squidoo, all those kind of sites. There were also forums and also specific blogs, like higher authority blogs. And also I mentioned as well, um, just trying to think, Web 2.0, article directories, forums, and blogs. And there was also another one that i just trying to remember at the top of my head right now. Uh, oh, social, social bookmarking, that's right. And I just went blank there for a minute. <laughs> okay. And what you're, you're going to be doing is getting all these links directly from these sites but linking back to you. But in order to be able to get these links, you firstly have to be able to create or content to be able to submit to these because obviously without any content, you won't be able to submit anything to them and therefore you won't be able to get backlinks. So the whole idea is content could just mean simply maybe a Twitter message that you might put out might be less than 140 characters long. It might be as simple as that. You might be just a simple uh, forum post. It might only be like, um, so a forum profile I should say, it might only be like maybe about 50 words or something like that. So it's actually not that much, but that's still considered content. And the whole idea is to generate that little backlink or that link that you put into your profile or link inside the Twitter message to link back to your site. Now, these things are sort of more additional add-ons, which I will sort of share with you um, probably in the next part. But we're going to be mostly focusing on this whole area, which is the article directories and Web 2.0. And these ones are crucial because the reason why I'm suggesting these is because we need we can actually spin out or create multiple content from the same article that you've written. If you remember going back into week three, sorry, week four, I talked about creating content. And if you wrote, if you've been doing the homework and taking the action steps, you would have created a article which was about 400 to 450 words long. Now, what you can do with this particular one article, you could turn this article into probably about, spin it out into about 30 to 40 times or so or re-replicate it 30 to 40 times. And I'm not saying about just duplicate content because Google, for example, doesn't like that. What, we, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be actually modifying these uh, articles that you, this article that you've written, which is once, and turn it into 30 to 40 different articles with very unique content in there. And that technique, what we're going to call is called spinning. So we're going to be spinning these articles and turning into 30 to 40. Now, I know that some people have actually uh, probably have heard that term and also seen what that's been done and uh, probably are not sure what it does. So I'm going to share with you exactly what we're going to be doing with that. And that's the reason why 
I emphasized very, very heavily two weeks ago for you to have all these articles written. So hopefully you have at least five articles that are written on your on your niche website and you've posted them and they've gone out, out there and also to you completed last week's homework which was to do the article directories. As I said, if you haven't done any of those, please go back to week four and week five before moving on to this because this will not really help you if you just watch this and not implement it. All right, so that's what, what we're going to be doing today is going to be focusing on creating and producing more content which is what I, I wrote over here and as I mentioned, you would have got these articles. I'm going to pull out some examples of the ones I've written already and we're going to be taking those examples and turning them into that. Okay, so I'm going to clear this and let me talk a little bit about what it means to spin an article. So, as I said, we can produce more content and we're going to be spinning these articles or duplicating these articles but with unique content in it, if you want to put it that way. So, let's look at it. Spinning uh, articles. Oops. Yeah. So, what you'll see here is let's say, for example, you've written one article, blah, 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 blah. And it's about 400 to about 450 words long. And as I mentioned, keep it at that as a minimal. The reason why is because some article directories don't take anything less than 400 words. So ideally, the best amount of words to create is 450 just to be safe. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this article and we're going to plug it into a software. And this particular software, I'm going to share with you. Actually, there's two of them. There's one that's a free version. I might as well share that actually with you right now. And that uh, software is called um, Try Content Professor. And you can download that one or set it up, set up a free account um, at yeah, trycontentprofessor.com. Sorry about my handwriting. I don't know why my pad's today a bit dirty, so that's why it's a little bit hard to write. The other one is not free, but it's it's actually very, very low cost to be able to set that up. And this is the one that I use and my team uses. This one's, uh, it's, if you pay $7, you get a $7 uh, trial for one week and then it's just $77 for a whole year. And this one here is try the best spinner and you'll find with this one, this one's very, very good. Now, the reason why I'm recommending these is I'll show you shortly a demonstration on why I recommend these pieces of software. Firstly, the free one, trycontentprofessor.com is basically a software that allows you to be able to spin your article, take that article and put different synonyms or different words in there and it does that. But you are very limited in what you do and obviously with any free software, you're only limited to like creating one article which is not what we want to do. But in this instance, you could probably get away and um, save all your articles that you've created in there like the spun ones into a Word document which will take you a little bit more time but you know, it's free. Otherwise, um, if you're willing to, to spend a little bit of money, it's worthwhile just, it's only $77 for the whole year, it's really cheap to get Try the Best Spinner and uh, this particular software allows you to create projects, save them, create multiple articles and then spin them into the right thing. Now, once we've done that, you're going to be looking at uh, getting say 30 articles produced. That's exactly what I just want you to do for this week. That's why I'm saying I hope you've completed everything because this week is pretty intense. You're going to be doing quite a bit of um, work on this one and cr to create 30 additional articles will take a bit of time but you don't have to sit there and think about writing 30 individual unique articles. What you'll be doing is you'll be getting this software to create the 30 articles for you and uh, you just need to spend a bit of time to actually firstly learn the software then once you've learned about the software you'll be able to just implement the things and then just use it to spin. Now, once you've spun those 30 articles, it's going to be all about submissions and you'll be submitting them to those different sites that I recommended. And as I mentioned last week, there's 15 article directories. 
I'm hoping that you can see the reasons why I've broken it down for you because if you've completed that, you should be well on your way to be able to just do these submissions and still have to sit there and create the accounts again or create the accounts at all if you haven't done it. So you'd be submitting to 15 article directories, I think 15, 16 article directories, which I gave you last week. You'll be going out to Web 2.0 places to submit them, which is like Blogger, Squidoo, and also WordPress. And uh, I don't know if I've got enough time today to actually show you how to do all that there, but it's actually not that hard. And uh, it's pretty much the same thing as how you post an article onto your blog. And I showed you how to do that in week three and week four as well. So just review that and just implement that same process there. But uh, these things are actually something that is pretty much extra work. If you can try and do it uh, this week, that'll be great. You know, it'll be you'll be ahead of the rest. So that's pre pretty much what I'm going to be. That's what I'm talking about right now. Is firstly, you're going to, going to have to take your article that you've written, which is 400 to 500, 450 words, plug it into the software, which is either trycontentprofessor.com or trythebestspinner.com. And then from there, it'll spin out 30 articles and then you'll have submissions of 16 articles, uh, 16 article directories in Web 2.0. All right, so hopefully that clears up or explains to you exactly what that does. Okay, let's have a look. Um, the first thing we want to do is define some rules because obviously anyone can just plug these things in and hopefully with an automated piece of software, it will actually generate an article. But the key component that you have to understand is you're not just going to plug it in and let the computer do the whole work for you. Yes, the tools are great to have and uh, that's the reason why we invest money into these tools but it's got to be obviously readable as well or it's got to make sense. Um, otherwise, what's the point of actually writing these articles and submitting onto the internet? Then you may as well become another bunch of articles that are just going to be sitting there which uh, just basically trying to build backlinks. The whole idea is you want to capture your audience and you want to make sure that whatever content you write makes sense and that's very, very important. So make sure that after you've spun your content, you read through it as well and make sure that it makes grammatical sense and also that there's no spelling errors as well. That's very, very important and you need to just ensure that that's been done. Uh, okay, the other things as well too, uniqueness. You want to make sure that you have at least 50% uniqueness. You might not be understanding what that means. Well, in the software, you'll find that there's a little sort of meter at the end of the software and I'll tell you how unique it is. It'll range from 0 to 100%. If it's 100% unique, obviously, it's brand new written. As long as it's 50% and above, uh, then you're fine. That's that's what I'm talking about and I'll show you once we jump into the software where to look out for that and how to um, yeah, write it so that way the content gets spun into at least 50% unique. So that's really the main thing and also to just ensure that uh, you have links as well inside each article. Okay, because otherwise if you're doing all this and submitting it and without having links going back to you, your website, then it's really pointless doing this whole thing. So that's really what we're going to be looking at when we're writing our spin, uh, spinning rules. I'll just put up here so that way you can see. These are the rules that you will need to follow. Simple, but um, common sense. <laughs> it's just that a lot of people do overlook this and just hopefully just want to try and sort of um, what's the word for it? Skip and. Uh, take shortcuts and that's not what I'm recommending. I'm recommending that you do spend some quality time going through these articles and make sure that you produce them properly. All right, let's take a look then. Let me just put underneath. The next thing that I'm going to do right now is we're just going to jump into these softwares as I've shared with you and I've got it already open and that way you can see what exactly I'm doing. Close that. Let's have a look. Okay. Let me take you there first. The first one is get contents professor. Oh, so no, not get try, try. I mean, so it'd be try content professor dot com. If you can see that clearly at the top, so I'll just uh, take you to that site. I just thought I'd share that with you and show you exactly what it looks like. You might be wondering why is this one particularly free um, compared to the other one? Well. 
as I said, the most important the thing that about this particular software, this is an online software, and also too, it only is limited allowing to write one article and spin one article at a time. It won't let you save any articles more than once. And uh, if you need to write 30, 40, it becomes a little bit of a, a time-consuming task. Though, as I said, it's easy to be able to just copy all that spun articles into, say, a Word document or maybe a text document, which allows you to be able to save it and then you just do that duplicate 30, 40 times, or however you need to do. All right, so just basically go here. You know, it doesn't cost anything to sign up. Just sign up with the details, confirm your email, uh, where is it? There you go. If you just click here and it will ask you to fill in the details and sign up. And as I said, it doesn't cost you anything to do. Now, they will have upsells after this just to let you know. That way, when you go through, you might be going, oh, do I need to get it? Basically, it's just upsells to the pro version and inside the pro version, you do get access to a few better things, e.g. the ability to save more uh, articles and also to spin more articles. Furthermore, the... Uh, the direct the uh, dictionary that they've got in there is a little bit more comprehensive as well. But for sufficiently, if you're just starting out and you don't want to pay for um, any of this, then ideally try the content professor. It's free to do, and uh, you can get yourself set up. All right. Oh, that's the other thing I just got to mention as well. With any of these pieces of software, it has a loaded what they call a dictionary, which has different synonyms. So it will go through your your content that you've written. Say, for example, your articles. And it will say, for example, take up, let's just take a word here, standard. And it'll find uh, another word that would be very similar to standard. So another word for standard would be normal. And it'll actually help you and find those kind of words which helps you replace them and make your article unique. All right. So that's, that's that software there. That's how you sign up for it. Once you've logged in, this is what you'll see you'll see all this section here and don't worry about this because I've just filled it in already but this will be all blank, all right? And uh, this will be blank and blah, blah, blah. The reason why I put this in here because is it does take a bit of time to actually go through the dictionary and find the cinnamon so I didn't want to actually have your time sitting here waiting for it to load. So what I've done is I've actually got an article. Let me open up the article so that way you can see. And as you're aware, I've been using quickest way to lose weight HQ. Uh, hq.com is that's the site that I've been doing as an example for this and I've had some articles already written. My virtual assistant actually writes these articles for me and then we and then she'll also take it through the spin. And that's what I'm talking about is that you can have this outsourced very, very easily to have someone else do it. You can simply basically take these videos and even give it to your virtual assistant and let them watch it and then let them follow it through to do. And essentially if they understand the whole principle and the concept it's not that hard to do. It just takes a bit of time. And if you're, say, spending, uh, I don't know, 10 hours getting these articles written and uh, having them spun and so forth, and your and your hourly rate could be something like $100 an hour, you've already spent um, $1,000 for 10 hours, yeah, 10 hours of work for $1,000. Whereas if you can pay a virtual assistant, you could probably get someone to do it for around about two, $3 an hour and you only spend like $20. So, it's definitely worthwhile doing it and consider getting someone else to help you to do that. Anyway, jumping back into it, this is the article that I've had my virtual assistant write and uh, this is the unique one. This is the first one that she wrote and what we're going to do is we're going to take this one article and then we're going to spin it into 30 different versions and as I mentioned, what I mean by spinning is that it will take these words like these common synonyms like coarse, weight, magic, permanent, etc. It will go through the whole article for you automatically using the software and it will find other words that are related to that and it will replace it for you. And that way, you'll, you can actually change these terms to create another different article. Essentially, it is very much the same format. The only difference is that it has different words in there which makes your article different and unique but essentially, the content or the message across is the same. And the whole goal behind doing this is one, to provide different content across the internet to different directories, but also two, to generate a backlink from here. And that's really what your goal is. Um, for any of these articles that have been written, you probably want to find your keyword in there and then put your link inside. All right, let's just jump back over there. This is the article, as I said, and I've pasted it into Content Professor. And you'll notice that it's been pasted in over here. 
and I'll open it up. So as you saw before, I pasted in the title, which is this one here. So quickest way to lose weight, top weight tips, lost tips, sorry, top weight, lose top. Top weight loss tips. Copy that and then paste it in here. And what will happen is that it'll, it should come up with um, yeah, your title. And same thing, you paste your body of your article in here. And once that's done, you also need to create an author resource box. Now, for people out there who don't know what an author resource box is, it's basically a little blurb at the bottom of your article if you're submitting to article directories to just inform people where to find out more information about you and also how to get in contact with you. And what I've done is we always have like a standard one here. We've got like a text file that has standard resource box which you can copy and paste. So for you, I would suggest maybe creating three different ones that you might want to put and for example, finding your quickest way to lose weight, learn the various natural programs including three-day detox, whole body cleansing and fat burner. So create three maybe different ones for your particular niche and have them pre-done and all you have to do is simply just copy and paste it straight into your article at the bottom for the resource box and that will save you a lot of time. So that's what I've done. Now, let's just jump back to the software. Over here on the right-hand side, if you want to be able to spin these documents so that, that way it comes up with all these different cinnamons which is to replace the current ones that you've got, all you have to do is simply click on the button here that says target cinnamons. I've actually already done it. That's why you see all these little parentheses and all these little pipes here. It All it means is that it's these are the next best suggested terms to replace them. So if the term there was top which was what it was, it recommends to try best, prime, oh here we go, so you can see all that. So these are all the ones that are possibly what you could add on there. You could even select all of them if you wanted to and and then hit apply and it allows you to be able to add them. And therefore, once it spins it, it'll spin it with any of these different ones. And as long as it makes sense, then you're fine to copy and use them. So you can do that pretty much for anything. So I'll just click on here. No, there's nothing there. Maybe balance, wait, wait. Uh, or balance. Yeah, there you go, wait. So you could pretty much copy all of that if you wanted to. And I'll just put it in, same thing. Okay. That's the beauty of using spin software is because you don't have to sit there and get someone to rewrite it or you rewrite it each article and it's really powerful that it does that too. Okay. Let's, so basically that's that's how you do it. Um, and once you've done that and it's found that because it does take a bit of time to search for that, then you just want to click include cinnamons and what we'll do is punch all these things in for you automatically and then you'll click on the button that says generate spun articles. So I'll do that now and I'll click on preview article and within say, I don't know, a minute or so, it should generate a spun article for me. Here we go. Okay. So, uh, it's obviously come up. I haven't really um, gone through personally myself to actually make sure that the cinnamons are correct. But, you know, this is just an example to show you. I highly recommend that you do sit there and uh, go through it or you get your virtual assistant to go through it and make sense or read it to make sense. So, for example, the article title has been completely changed from quickest way to lose weight tips for that. It goes the easy way to shed pounds, highest equilibrium reduction tips. <laughs> so it's actually completely replaced that but essentially it is the same. Without a doubt, there isn't a swift fact reduction system ever because there's no perfect pill, etc. So anyway, I won't read through the whole thing but as you can see, it's changed the article completely somehow and made it unique. And let's scroll down to the bottom. As you can see, you've also got the author resource box as well and it's spun that too. Okay. Let's talk about here, as I was saying to you before, if you remember, clearly I talked about a uniqueness score and all that and also a word count. As I said, minimum try to aim for 400. In this instance, I've created a 680 word article which is fantastic. Uh, readability score, I wouldn't worry too much about that. I would highly recommend you read it yourself and make sure it makes sense. If it doesn't, change it. Grade level, don't worry about that. Now, it's uniquely score is here, 80% which means that it's it's greater than 50%. If you can try and target for that, that's excellent. 
And uh, once you've done that, then simply just copy all this, like select it all. So select the whole thing, copy it by just you know copying it and then paste it into a Word document. And then that way, save it in your Word document and use it for later on. The reason why I recommend you do that is because one, um, Content Professor, if you're using the free version, only allows you to save one article. So there's no point saving it online, save it on your computer. And two, uh, just in case your computer crashes, at least you've got a copy. Oh, sorry, just in case your internet crashes, you've got a copy of it on your computer. Now, if you want to spin it again, you simply click the spin button and it'll go through and redo and spin it again into different forms. See, so you go. See, that's another spun article. Copy it again and do it. And do it 30 times. That's exactly what you just need to do. If you do it 30 times, it's sufficient enough to be able to set that up so that we can post it out into article directories in all different places as I'm going to suggest. Okay, so that's Content Professor. Hopefully, that little free tool um, will help you with regards to spinning articles. As I said, this is, this is a good starter tool. It's free and doesn't cost anything to use. The only thing is, is the dictionary base in terms of its words is not the best. It's, it's okay. It, it does the job. But if you want something that's a little bit more accurate and gives you even more uniqueness and works it better, then I would try to go to the best spinner, which I'm going to give you an example right now as well. So let's just jump over. Um, I'll open up the best spinner. Okay, I've got uh, my Windows XP because as I'm running a Mac on my computer, I had to install something that allows me to run Windows XP. And uh, uh, Try the Best Spinner is a software which you need to install or download onto your computer. And if you've got a PC, then that's great. It works perfectly for you. But if you have a Mac like I do, then you need to have Windows XP running parallel. Now, in this instance, the reason why I'm not worried myself is because all my staff have PCs. So I've given them the software for them to be able to use and uh, basically spin articles for me. And once they've spun the articles, they just submit it all. So I don't really have any interaction there, but I understand the whole process of how it works. And that's the reason why I'm able to share this with you because I've done it before myself. Okay, so if you're going to use uh, the Try the Best Spinner, this is what it looks like. And once again, it's very similar to Content Professor. You just take your article and insert it straight into here. Um, all you have to do is just simply create a new project and then insert a new article and it will come up with a blank screen. Nothing will be here. But to speed up the process, as I said, it does take a bit of time for the computer to think through where to find the synonyms, how to replace it. I just want it to speed up time. And essentially, I just copied that same article which I showed you over here. As you can see, this is the article and I pretty much just pasted it into the section here. And what I've done is once I've done that, I've gone over here to this tab that says Easy Spin. And what it does is the best spinner will go through and pick out all the words that they think that they can replace and will give you suggestions. The great thing about this software is that you can choose as many words as you want or you can choose to have as little words as you want. But the beauty about it is that you have a lot of control over it. And as you can see, it's taking a bit of time thinking because there's a lot of words in there to do. But once it does open up, you'll see how simple it is to be able to uh, access all that. There we go. So you can see all those boxes for filling. All right. So let me just give you an example. This is the original word, quickest way to lose weight, top weight loss tips, as you know. That's the title. And as you can see, there's lots of different synonyms that, that you can replace it with. You can have most effective, simplest, etc. You can either select them all just by uh, selecting or you can just select one or two, just like that, okay? And you do that for as many of the words that it's recommending and pretty much it will keep going until you reach the end of the article. Now, this process does take a bit of time, just as I said with Content Professor, same thing and that's the reason why if you do want to save time or you don't want to do it yourself, hire a virtual assistant to do that for you because this process is a process. You know, it's it's something that can be automated with a virtual assistant and they just repeat the same process over and over for you again because ultimately, all you want to do is to create different articles with unique um, yeah, words in it and unique contents. All right, I won't uh, go through this because it, it will take me a bit of time and uh, to do something like that. But what I wanted to point out to you, once again, that has a uniqueness key up here in here. And ideally, aim for at least 50% plus 
and ideally more than 400 to 450 words. Those are the two key indicators that I recommend to ensure that is up to date and uh, making sure that it does match our rules. Now, once that's done, then you can click over here where it says spun article and it'll pop up in plain text or HTML preview. And you could either, it gives you many options. You can save it. And as I said, this software allows you to save as many as you want. You don't, you're not restricted to as many as you save. So you can always come back to the project and uh, export it out anytime and without having to copy and paste into a Word document. The other thing as well too is that you can copy it out. As you can see, copy the clipboard, post to the WordPress blog, or you can create a new spin. And if you create a new spin, it will just re-spin these articles for you automatically. The other thing I just thought I mentioned it does have an extra function, which is really cool. Copyscape Check is basically a main uh, website or main place where they do double check to make sure that your article or your content that you've produced is not going to be already available on the internet. So if it is checked and matched up with copyright and uh, it doesn't match up with anything, then that means your article is unique. So it's a really good tool to have because the last thing you want to do is to submit this on the internet and then find out that someone else has exactly the same article as you. Then you could be infringement of copyright laws. So you've got to just make sure you check out that. All right. So that's pretty much try the best spinner. As I said, this one is a pay tool, $7 for the first week to trial it out and if you want to just try it out to see if that works for you and then it's just $77 for the whole year. It's not per month, it's a whole year which is fantastic because that's, that's the reason why I got it and just gave it straight to my virtual assistant. All right, that's, um, that's all, about best, uh, all about spinning articles. So let's just jump back over here and I guess I've just shown you how to be able to spin articles. That way, at least now you know what to do. All right. Uh, so spinning articles is crucial. And as I said, aim to do at least 30 articles through the software. So Captain Spun read, which means just proofread them and make sure that the grammar's right, spelling's correct and all that. And it also makes sense as well. Just aim to try and do 30 articles through that. And that way, you'll have easily 30 articles ready to submit out onto the article directories and also ready to be submitted out to the web 2.0 directories. And that will be really, really powerful because straight away, you're going to be creating easily 30 backlinks. And that's something that we just want to do. Now, you might be wondering, wow, what a process <laughs> um, to get 30 backlinks. And 30 backlinks isn't very much when you think about it when there's major authority websites that have thousands and thousands of backlinks. Now, the reason why uh, I, I want you to do this is because I just want to share with you, this is just only one part. There's actually going to be another part which I show you how to get thousands of links straight away. And I'm talking about thousands. I'm not talking about 10, 20, 30 of links or so. And uh, there's other softwares which I'm going to share with you in the next tutorial or next webinar and that those particular softwares will get you those thousands and that's the reason why those softwares have been um, created. Now I just uh, wanted to, I just saw a quick question that came up saying is that 30 articles from the original article and yes it is. 30 articles directly from the original one. As I showed you right here, this is my, whoops, <laughs> this is my original article and if you put it through either try uh, trycontentprofessor.com you can generate 30 articles from there or as I said, try the best spinner and either one of them will do as I mentioned. I gave you the pros and the cons between the both of them. Okay, um, but great question. Uh, let me have a quick look to see the next thing. Oh, okay, so once you create those 30, 30 articles and you've got them ready, whether you have it saved on your computer or you have it saved you know, online, uh, what you want to do is to submit them to the article directories and for example, let's just open up an article directory. So eZine Articles was a place that I told you to set up and I hope you have set it up because I, I did explain to everyone last week that uh, it's crucial that you have all your article directory accounts all ready to go because you're going to start using them this week. I, I don't want you to be spending your time this week to be setting them up because by the time you set them up, you're obviously going to be one week behind. So do your best to try and get into it and uh, 
have it all prepared. But if you've set that up, that's excellent because the whole idea now is to take that those articles and begin submitting it to the eZine article directories. I'm going to try and type and find the article quickest way to lose weight. I'm going to see if I can find the articles that we've written and just show you an example how it looks because we are ending towards the session so I do want to ensure that I give us enough time to be able to set you the homework and action steps and also give you an opportunity to ask questions as well because this is an interactive section. Uh, okay, in a week. I think that's us. There we go. So I've clicked on that. So most likely, whatever article you see on any of the directories for quickest way to lose weight, uh, it's it's a spun article. Uh, I might just go and find our pseudo name. That way it makes it easier to be able to find it. But essentially, I just want to show you once it's been spun, how it looks on the article directory. So that way you can sort of get an idea of what you, to expect. Uh, okay, here we go. Body cleansing to detox towards typical three-day detoxification. So that's just an example I'm going to show you. Obviously, this one was targeted for the three-day detox HQ website. And we had one original article. I'll show you right here. So you may have seen, you, like if you had a look, I've obviously got one original article which was written. And then my virtual assistant just spun it into 30 different versions and we submitted it to 30 different directories or 30 different places. Now, as I said, in any directories or article directories that you submit to, you'll have your article, which is right here. Also, you'll have your title, which is right up here. And then at the bottom, you'll have your resource box. Oops. Sorry about that. Let me just open it up again. Uh, where are you? There we go. Okay, so yes, as I said, right at the bottom here in your article, this is what we call the resource box, which is basically a way for you to say, if you want to find out more information about your, your the article that you've written or information about that stuff, simply visit 3-Day Detox Headquarters or that link there. And as you can see, it's allowed us to put two links. And that's exactly the backlinks I'm talking about. Once you've got these articles, this is where the backlinks come from and they come straight to your site, back to your new site. And that's your first two backlinks or whatever backlinks there. And as I said, if you've got 30 articles and you submit to 30 different locations, you'll get at least minimum 30 backlinks. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much how it looks like. And just to let you know, article directories don't let you put links inside the articles. There's a reason behind that because they just allow you to have a resource box. So make sure these articles are well written because they're going to be indexed by Google and also at the same time indexed by article directories which gives you some kind of credibility and then down here, this is where you'll get your links back to your site. All right, I think that's pretty much it in terms of submissions for article directories. Let me just jump over here and what I want you to do for this week is with all the article directories in terms of submissions, let me just write it down, submissions. Um, so take your articles, the 30 spun. I know you will have 30 of them sitting there and there's a reason why I want you to do 30s because you're not going to use all of them. You're going to probably take 15 of those articles. And... Uh, from those 15 articles, you're going to submit them to the 15 article directories that I recommended last week. Now, if you haven't got the uh, links to those, it's on my blog and uh, my virtual assistant would have put all those there. It's like 15 different ones. Ensure that your accounts are set up and as I explained in the last webinar, if you haven't seen that webinar, just go back to watch the replay of it. Uh, you can use separate email addresses and create a pseudo name to be able to submit to or use those article directories. If you don't want to use a pseudo name and you're happy to use your own name, you're most welcome to do that as well too. Then what I want you to do is take three of the articles 
and submit them to the web 2.0 and I did sort of briefly talk a little bit more about that back in week 4 which is pretty much Squidoo so make sure you've got a Squidoo account I told you to set that one up last week or suggested that uh, blogger.com and also to WordPress and I did have a, a, a a student last week as well suggest as well Tumblr. So if you do have time, you can also submit it to Tumblr as well. And the process is all very much this, very similar in these ones. So if you can submit to these ones as well, that's sort of just extra if you have time to do and you'll get some backlinks from those as well. The whole idea is to make sure that your article submit it with a backlink as well and um, helping you to get those backlinks first. Once you've got those backlinks, then we're ready to move on to the next because in the next few, uh, in the next webinar, which I'll share with you, I'll be showing you what to do with the rest of the articles and how to take them further. So that way, you know, you can actually have um, more backlinks coming in. And that's where I was talking about getting those thousands of links because we're going to take those last articles and submit them out to different blog networks and also to different networks which have thousands and thousands of people linking back to your site. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, you can pretty much say that this is your homework. <laughs> uh, if you want to take these, these are your action steps, is to get spun articles done. So I'll write it here actually for you. So these are your action steps. As I said, the first thing you want to do is uh, get one article written, which you would have done about two weeks ago. You would have actually had five written. Take one of the articles and spin it into 30 spun articles using either one of the softwares that I've rec recommended today. As I said, happy it's for you to use either one. Uh, it's try, try Content Professor and also try the best spinner. Excellent piece of software. And I'll have the links at the bottom for you to be able to access it on my blog. Then the second part is to take those spun articles and submit them to all these different places. And once you submit them to those different places, it's pretty much ready to rock and roll. Now, to let you know, we'll take a bit of time because article directories need to need time to approve it. And as I said, that's the reason why it's so, so important for you to read through these articles because people will read through them. I'm talking about literally people at these article directories who run them and manage them will read through them and make sure that they do make sense and there's no spamming and there's no uh, content that's not proper, <laughs> e.g. like sexual explicit material or any of that. So they'll get, go through and change that and make sure. And if it gets approved, then it'll be submitted and it'll go out there. And you need to allow for at least uh, three to four days or so for that. Some directories are instant. Some of them come out within a few hours and I know that there's a few of them. But something like eZine articles takes at least three to four days to get approved. So that's the reason why you need to give it some time. Uh, whereas these ones, Squidoo, Blogger, WordPress, all these are instant. Okay, so you can set these up and instantly you'll see the articles on the site and it'll give you an instant direct link. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for regards to uh, overview and action steps. I did pretty much run over everything. What I'm going to do is just spot on perfect for uh, Q&A session time. Now, if you do have questions, you are most welcome to ask them. That's the reason why I, I made this these webinars designed so that you can ask me questions after these kind of webinars that I've gone through. So I'm going to allow for at least 10 minutes for you to ask any questions and for me to be able to answer them. So let's get the ball rolling. And as I said, if you do have any questions, this is your perfect opportunity to be asked them because I can show you exactly what to do and how to go about doing it as well. And uh, also to, uh, what was I say as well? Yes, um, with the questions and answers, I, I usually have them also posted on the blog as well. Um, okay, so the question I've got from Mark is, uh, the uh, that article is good enough quality to post on a site or article directory? Um, I think you're referring to my first one, if that's correct. This one here, the this one here is the original written one. This is the original unique one that my virtual assistant sat there and wrote, probably took it about... I don't know, 20 minutes or so to write that article. Um, and then once you write that article, then she'll go through and start spinning it. It takes her about 
probably about half an hour again to go through and do the cinnamons. Once that's done, then it only takes like two, three minutes just to copy each one or create new spun articles. So it doesn't take very long once it's spun. Um, and yes, every single article that you have, even if it's unique and spun, they are good quality posts. And as I said, just make sure that you do read through them or you get your virtual assistant to read through them and make sure it makes sense. Okay, great question, Mark. Um, let me have a look. So the next next thing I wanted to answer for you is, uh, okay, this is from David. I see you use the same pseudoname for all your niche sites. What about using different names for each site in case your account got deleted for whatever reason you would lose everything? That's a great question, David. I, <laughs> The reason why I've used the same pseudoname is only in that particular niche uh, that I'm done because I've got one niche in three day detox and one niche in quickest way to lose weight and that's sort of like in the health kind of industry. In the engagement one, which I've got another niche in that one, we've got a completely different pseudonym. So yes, it's it's ideal if you can set them up to have different pseudonyms for different niches. But in the instance of the similar ones, I just decide off oh, there's no point changing it because they are very similar and we thought we might as well become an expert in that one. So yes, that's a good idea and very good point because if anything happens like one account gets deleted or you decide to change where you're going in terms of niche site building and, and so forth, then it's good to have different names for that. So yeah, and also just to mention as well, make sure you do set, set up separate or different accounts for different names because then that way you've got uh, spreading the risk. So that's that's good. Uh, and also, David's just saying, and isn't spinning just a form of spammy? Well, David, um, some people say that and it, it really depends on who you speak to. But in our experience, just from our niche site coaching duel that I did with Pat Flynn and also coaching 20 students inside the niche site coaching program, um, we've had huge success with, with them. A lot of them already are ranking on the first page of Google and making money. And in terms of spamming the internet, no, because if you are creating good content and that's why I emphasize so, so heavily to make sure that you read through the content after it's been spun, then it becomes unique content again. Um, the whole idea is trying to get out as much content out into the marketplace as possible so that way you can get as many backlinks but at the same time providing value of articles. One thing I just want to mention as well, you probably might see this but you don't realize it, is that Twitter and Facebook, every time you do a tweet about your post, every time you do a post of your Facebook, most of the time, Twitter and Facebook actually feed directly your content, your syndicated content into the networks again. And, um, you know, does, do we consider that as being spamming or consider that as being duplicate content? Well, you can think of it that way, but it, it, it doesn't seem like that when, when it gets out into the market. So you're actually distributing your content across different places in different forms. And uh, we find that with videos as well, if you've got a lot of people uh, with an account, say for example, with Chewmogul or Traffic Geyser, for example, you, most of them actually have only one video and they send it out to 100 video sites. Is that really duplicate content? Yes, but you're actually duplicating it out into different networks which allows for a, a bigger span of people. So yeah, that, and hopefully that answers your question there. <laughs> Okay, uh, next question I've got from Mark. Great question though, uh, David though. Uh, question is, so if you take the five original articles and spin them 30 times, you should have 150 articles. Perfect, that's exactly right. Um, if you do that, then you're going to really, really be well ahead of your competition and also well ahead of us and uh, you'll be able to have as well lots and lots of articles. Now, the reason why I only recommend to do 30 is because I don't want to overwhelm you. That's the first reason. And secondly, uh, if you have 150 articles, you probably wouldn't be submitting all these articles all at once. The whole idea is that we're going to be doing this over a period of time so that it looks organic and also too, it is going to be um, put on outside into a longevity program because we're not we're not here to just get these backlinks instantly and I'll show you an example why that way you can sort of see all right let's say for example let's start at day one and then I don't know we'll say this is day 180 so that's like six months or something like that halfway through the year 
if you say, for example, you go crazy at the beginning and you went out and submitted uh, 150 articles, which some people do at the beginning, then firstly, it will flag you. Uh, Google will flag you because you've just got way too many articles coming out to the same and too many links coming back to your site. And secondly, as well too, you're going to have to go out and create another 150 articles to be able to submit over a period of time. Over over the next round again, and you got to keep doing that consistently, and it becomes a lot of work. What I'm trying to do for you is to teach you methods which will firstly be smart and also uh, help you with regards to spreading out the content. So you might start at day one and you might submit uh, five articles in the first week. Then the next week you'll do it again, and you'll keep doing that. But the thing is, you've created these 150 articles at the beginning and you, you're going to actually spread them out. And when you spread them out, you don't have to actually post for quite a long time because the fact is, is that this will be all automated. If you set it up correctly inside WordPress, it has that schedule function which I shared with you in week four. And also too, with the software I'll be sharing with you the following webinar, it actually spreads them out and sends them out every three days or so. It won't send them out um, every oh, the first day. If you say you submitted one article and it submits out to 300 blogs, it will actually submit these over three days. So therefore, it's not all at once. And that's the whole idea is that we want to have it all spread out because we want to build up the content over time. And that way, it'll build up to you to rank your site higher over a period of time. And that's really the reason why we're doing it that way. But good point there, uh, Mark, because 150 articles would be excellent to have as a side um, for you to be able to use. And if you can get that done, go for it. You know, keep it aside and use it for later on. Okay, I just want to mention if you do have any other questions, feel free to answer it because I mean, I put it in the side in your questions box because I will be wrapping up very soon. And uh, if you've got any last minute questions that you want to ask, uh, make sure you do put them in before I wrap up. Uh, i got a question from Megan. Uh, Tyron, are the replays of these webinars available? Yes, uh, it's 3 a.m. here in Ireland. Wow. Thanks very much for coming on, Megan. Appreciate that. Uh, yes, it is definitely available. And if you want to check it out, I've had all the replays posted up every Monday on my blog. So I'll just take you there right now. Shortly, I'm probably going to create maybe a, a direct link so that way you can have all the um, all the webinar replays just in one page. Uh, I'll do that after I come back. And I think I just got to let everybody know as well, next week's webinar is also not on because I will actually be away. I'm actually taking a week off uh, going overseas for a bit. So yeah, next week's webinar will not be on until the following week. So two weeks from now, we'll, be, we'll resume the webinar series as well. But if you just come over here, just scroll down to the bottom. Here we go. So part five of last week is here and you can see that there's... Um, all the videos are all there and if you click on retrieve more information, inside there you'll see all the links for the article directories and so forth. I mean, I think I've had so far close to about 3,000 views on all these videos um, just alone because I think the information that I've provided inside there have, has attracted a lot of attention and um, yeah, it's great that you, you guys can come back to watch it again. I hope that it does provide you with a lot, a lot of information. Okay, here you go. So. See, I've, I'm, my virtual assistant does all this for me. So that's the reason why a lot of things I teach is all about outsourcing. And, uh, you know, if you can get them to do all these things for you. Basically, all these were the resources that I mentioned inside there, which is all related to article directories. Just make sure you set up an account with all these and, uh, yeah, post all your articles to those directories because I'm sure that you'll be able to get lots of backlinks as well. And here you go. Here's all the previous webinars. She even put them in there for you. So you have to thank her for that. <laughs> um, okay. So as I said, next next webinar, or well, this current webinar will be posted up on Monday next week. She'll set that all up for you. And then in two weeks time, coming back uh, on, what is it now? 14 days from today would be 21st. The 21st of April is when I'll be resuming the next webinar. Uh, I'll just write that down for you. So just next week, there will not be a webinar. The next one, next webinar that resumes, oops, is going to be around the 21st. But don't worry, I'll, the system will, will actually email you uh, to let you know when the next webinar is. So, so next week's not scheduled for any webinar and uh, you can come back after then. 
And uh, in that, on the 21st of April, you'll be looking at uh, the next part of the traffic generation strategy. So in actual fact, you actually have a good two weeks to be able to catch up for whatever you haven't done because obviously in that next week that I'll be sharing with you, which is on the 21st of April, is part three. And I'll be going to quite a lot of powerful linking strategies which will also require a lot of work as well and um, if you haven't caught up by then, if you haven't caught up to by week six, then you really, really need to catch up because I'm going to be moving full steam ahead. So yeah, just make sure that um, this next week that you do have and uh, have off and also the week after that to catch up on everything that you can do. Okay, let's have a look. I've got another question here as well and I'll take two more questions and then we'll... We'll wrap it up as well. Um, Megan says, thanks so much. You're welcome, Megan. It's just terrific stuff and thank you so much for doing what you do so well. Thank you again. Uh, Okay, David, where do you get the information for the original article? Okay, great question. Now, um, actually, I I, uh, I was going to say, best thing to do, David, is to go back onto week yeah, well, uh, week four, because I actually went through in very, very much detail on how to be able to find the content for it. But to help you get started anyway, saves you having to, to watch through the whole webinar. Where we find content to write is places such as Amazon.com and have a look inside the books area. And it'll, it'll actually go through in detail. I'll list it out for you because I still, funny enough, I still have my mind map from that week so I can sort of just briefly run through it. Okay, so where to find the information to be able to write for the original article? I looked at Amazon, which if you look at the book section right here, uh, there we go, books. If you're clicking on the books there, you can run a search on your particular keyword for your niche market and inside there, it'll bring up a whole list of books. And as I mentioned in week four, if you have a look at the books and look inside the book, you'll see a whole list of con- you'll see a list of contents or the content table of contents. Inside that contents, there it really gives you an outline of how to approach a particular niche or particular market that you're targeting, and you can use those titles as being your ideas, and that's where you can get that idea. The other one as well too is look into the dummy books on Amazon, dummies for guide, for example, for your particular niche. There's lots and lots of ideas to be able to write an original article for that. Or, um, as I said, in Market Samurai, which I'll just open up for you. That way you can sort of see what's going on there. Market Samurai has a really, really good content finding module as well. And if you haven't installed Market Samurai or got a copy of it, I'd highly recommend it. Um, I'll just show you. Just give me a moment. I'm loading that up. If you want to get your copy of Market Samurai, just go to I'll give you the link for it too. Uh, the link is test market samurai, and you do get a a seven day free trial. So it's. It's uh, testmarketsamurai.com and you do get a free seven-day trial. It's uh, $97, I think it is, just to be able to purchase it outright. But uh, once you've got that, it has a really good content finding module in there which really would help you um, in terms of finding other content quickly. So it saves you having to go out to the market and search for it. Just try to load mine up. As I've got... Uh, yeah, Market Samurai is taking a bit of time to load up because I've got a lot of applications running. But let me just try and see if I can open it up for you. There we go. Yeah. So as I said, two places, Amazon, Dummy Books Guide, and also Market Samurai in the Find Content Module. Now, while that's loading up, I'll just uh, specify as well, if you don't want to write the article yourself or cert- do that research, there's another site that I recommend to you called Article Z, which I recommend it as well. Uh, and also too, you can find original articles from private label private label rights, which you can get it from easy sorry, get easyplr.com. All right. 
So this is Market Samurai here. And on the left-hand side, you'll have this module called Find Content. This is probably the quickest and the fastest way to be able to find content on the internet without you having to go out there looking through individual sites. And you have options to select on like eZine articles, Article City, uh, Go articles, Google blog search, etc. And you'll find as soon as you click on those, it, Market Samurai will go out into the market and find you all those articles that you can use to be able to get ideas and put together your articles. So that's a really good resource to be able to use because it will really help you find original articles to write on. Okay. Well, I'm going to wrap it up right now. Um, thank you very, very much to everyone for coming on to the call tonight. It's been a real pleasure to be able to share this with you and I do hope that uh, you can take this all away. As always, I always leave off with ending this webinar to encourage you to take as much action as you can. Take everything that I've shared with you today, um, the overview, the action steps and just implement it. So hopefully by the 21st day of April, which is in about two weeks time when I come back from holidays, you'll have your niche site up and running obviously, uh, have your five articles already posted there, 30 spun articles and also submit it to all those directories as well. And once you've got that all in place, you're all re ready to rock and roll for the next part of the generation's traffic generation strategy because I'll be going to quite a little bit of depth on how to do that. And then the following week after that, I'll talk about monetization, which I'm really excited to share that with one with you. So by then, hopefully your site would be ranked somewhere in Google already. All right. Thank you very much again to everyone. Have a great night. Um, have a safe week for the next week. And I guess I'll see you in a couple of weeks time. And yes, um, check out the webinar replay next week on Monday on my blog. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up with you then. So have a great night, everyone. Thanks again.